Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is how to clean up in an excavator when you don't have any support equipment. So we're gonna play out a couple different scenarios. So first of all, yes, I realize that this dirt job, I don't have to be finicky about cleaning up, but if we didn't have to be finicky about cleaning up, we wouldn't have it down and dirty. So we're gonna pretend that we have to get all of this out of here and leave a nice tidy grade. Uh, the second thing, we're going to run through two set different scenarios. We're going to pretend uh, that we're on kind of a residential job where, uh, or, or it doesn't even have to be a residential job. We're going to pretend that we don't have to worry about compaction for our, our last little bit. And then we're going to worry about if we were cleaning out a basement or something where we would have to worry about compaction. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you'll see in just a second. So we get to this point, we've been cleaning up all day, we've been able to get pretty full buckets, but you know, oh man, that's not gonna do it. Well, maybe we can stab into more of this. Okay, well we can get a decently full bucket, but we're getting to the point where it's gonna be hard to get decent buckets. So let's talk about the concept of what, what causes an excavator bucket to fill up. If you look, as we drag across the ground, What's causing the dirt to go into the bucket is the dirt that is closer to the machine providing resistance. So as we scoop into it, this dirt here is kind of acting as a backstop so that the dirt fills into the bucket. So as you can see, it's actually going into my bucket. But because we don't have a lot, I'm starting to push all that dirt. And look at that, I was only able to get a half bucket. Well, that ain't gonna do it. So how can we provide more resistance? Now, one of the things I see a lot of, not even rookie operators do, it's, it's, I see a lot of seasoned guys do this, is they go, oh, well, I'll just go at it really fast and use the momentum. And what happens is, if you don't time it just right, and this, th this machine actually does a halfway decent job because you got fast enough hydraulics, but a lot of times the hydraulics aren't fast enough. You run out of stick right about here which is when you would naturally start to curl over. And what happens with most of those guys is when they run out of stick room, I'm gonna exaggerate it, but basically that's what happens. You have half of your bucket spill out before you're able to curl. Don't do that. You're causing yourself way more hassle. So we've got this beautifully crafted machine that is made to manipulate dirt. So why don't we manipulate some dirt? So instead of focusing on getting a bucket right now, let's let's pretend like we're on a basement finish or we're doing stone grade and we need this to be pretty precise. So we're gonna pull our grade and we're just gonna go over here, we're gonna pull our grade. I'm gonna stop right about there. Pull grade, stop. Pull grade, stop. And then what we're gonna go over here do is we're not gonna worry about filling our bucket. We're just gonna worry about keeping grade and then we're gonna sweep over and put it in a pile. And then we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna sweep this over and put it in a pile. Sweep over, put it in a pile. And this is where I'd have my grade man come out here and we'd double and triple check that our grade's all good. We get all this dialed in. and we're just sweeping into our pile. That's all we're worrying about right now. Now, I want you to notice which direction that pile's facing uh, and, and how it's oriented against the machine. It's oriented this way, not this way. And the reason I'm doing that is because now we've created a windrow that I can use for resistance. So I come in here flat and I'm going to just nice and gentle pull into this until the pile starts to move because now we're no longer getting the resistance we need. And instead of trying to whip in there with the stick and everything, rotate back on the heel of the bucket. And with that quick little stick flick, all we're doing is creating enough little oomph that the dirt falls back into the bucket. And yes, that's not an entirely full bucket, but for what we're working with, that's a pretty stinking full bucket. We're gonna do another pull right here. And again, we're gonna to try to stay on grade as we're doing this. Okay, they're starting to lose resistance. Flick it back, boom. That's another pretty full bucket. I bet we've easily got half of our material off of the grade. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna recreate our windrow. Look at there. 
We're just gonna make that nice little windrow of resistance. And you can actually nose this forward too as we clean to give you more of the windrow, if you will. Once we make our windrow, you guessed it, nice flat pass. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna do our flat pass. Look at that. That's a pretty full bucket. Now you might have to back up a little bit and do a little tidy up work, and that's okay. Look at how small our pile has gotten compared to what we started with. But also look at the way it's oriented right now. It's oriented kind of in one big mound. We want it to be in a windrow. So we're actually gonna take that material. We also wanna get it away from us a little bit. So we're gonna push it out. And remember, we're only doing this in circumstances where we don't have a support machine. We don't have a skid steer or a dozer that's gonna come clean this up. So we are already accepting the fact that we're gonna take a little more time on this because we don't have someone else cleaning up after us. Obviously, if I had a cleanup dozer or Rick was gonna bring the skid in here, uh, I would not be spending this much time doing this to keep a nice grade. But this, a, pr a perfect example of this is if you're finishing out a little section of stone grade for sidewalk or in a little cranny where you're not gonna get another machine in um, and you need to get it close enough that your laborer can kind of just hand tune it. Uh, another instance is maybe in a basement dig where you're gonna close out in a corner and you need to just tidy up a little bit. In this circumstance, we're working off of the idea that I'm not gonna dig down into my grade to get that resistance that I need. I need to do it all with the machine. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna try to grab, and I'm just gonna rotate back. And with that little flick, it all goes into my bucket, and I can actually come back for a second pass here. And we'll get a little bit more. Again, decently full bucket for what we're working with. And look at how much material we have left. We're very quickly getting into a range where I could have a laborer come in with a come along and, and just dial this in it would not be that big of a deal for him at all. And so we're gonna do another one, right about there. And I'm actually gonna nose this material back away from me a little bit. And because this is all soft, non-virgin, I've fluffed all this, you're gonna see that my grade isn't exact. If this were stone grade or if it were virgin basement grade, uh, it'd be a lot more accurate. So we're gonna flick, do a little more. And right about here, we're getting to the point where it's gonna be handwork. And, and sometimes you just can't get out of it. Now, if we're talking basement grade, stone grade, right about here is where I would be okay doing just a tiny dig into my grade. And let me show you what I mean by that. So instead of pulling flat, I'm gonna pull and I'm only gonna take about an inch or so. And what I can do now is I can take this material and shuffle it over and kind of fill that little, that little hole. And right here, a couple smacks. That will easily, easily get you compacted enough for stone grade or for a basement. Because you gotta think about, this machine weighs eight tons and with that smack, I don't have to lift the machine, but with that smack, I've got the majority of the weight of the machine popping on that. You've easily got 95% compaction there. And look at how flat we are. Come along, glaze it all over. Now, now we're gonna talk about another scenario where we've got a little pile and I'm just gonna scratch up a little pile here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That's the beauty of this little playground we got going on here is I can do whatever I want to with the grade and it's not gonna mess with anything. So now here's our last little pile that we're gonna, we're gonna pretend that we gotta get out of here. So we'll get it into our windrow. So if we were doing something where we weren't worried about the compaction element, this is where I would actually dig a little bit. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna get a little more aggressive than I was last time. And we're gonna make a little hole. And you can see there, I've actually created a hole. And now what I can do is I can just bat this material into the hole. So it's essentially like we just finished out the last one, except we can get aggressive. So if I need to dig a foot down and, and make a little spot, and then, you know, we're not going for full on compaction because this isn't gonna be some sort of finish grade, but just so we minimize settling, 
I'll just pop it a couple times. And there you go. Now I can run the Harley rake over that if this were a residential lot or if we were doing something out in a, a green belt area. I can run a Harley rake over that. You're gonna get hardly any settling whatsoever. And we've got it totally clean to the ground without having a support uh, machine come in and clean up after us. So it's pretty straightforward, but I know as a rookie, that's a little daunting. You spend a lot of time chasing your pile all over the place. The biggest piece of advice I'll give you is use your bucket, use the machine to do the work for you. If it's getting too close, don't keep chasing your pile back. Get in there with the back of your bucket and nose that pile back forward and then actually take the time to line it up and get it into a windrow because again, we don't have that support machine. It's okay to waste a little bit of time here to get it a little cleaner. And there you go. We've pretty much got that graded out. It's just that easy. So make sure you utilize the tool that's in front of you. Don't, don't feel like you have to dig in this box that you're used to where you only have to have dirt to resist and, and you've got to just chase pot. No, use that tool, use that bucket, however you need to, to manipulate the dirt so that you can do what you need to do. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. We'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.